Are you looking the wrong way tonight? Or looking in all different places, the wrong places? You're going to find out tonight whether you're looking the right way. People are all the time looking to find happiness. They'll, they'll search for it in jobs and money, drink, sex, drugs, relationships, and any other places. But they're looking in all the wrong places. Also, people will also be, are also looking for riches and worldly goods, look, seeking to get rich. The problem is the church is guilty of this strongly. Sure, God's not against us having finances and wealth and good jobs and things like that and having money to work with. But the focus, searching after wealth, the church is eager to get rich, get money, get, get get gold, get worldly possessions. People seek for riches sometimes because they think it will make them happy. Jesus said in Matthew 6, and I quote these scriptures a lot, start with the 19th, 19 through 21, then I'll read this 30, then the 33rd verse. It says, uh, do not store up for yourselves <clears throat> treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroys, but where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, where do you desire, where do you seek after, that is where your heart is also. And of course, he also said in Matthew 30, the same chapter, 31st says, he'll say, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom. Put in, looking in that direction, seeking him and his righteousness and his things and seeking after him. And then God will just provide and open the ways for things and to get finances or whatever to live good and whatever god will bless you he said that many times in the old testament he would bless you as long as you put him first and obey his his statutes his commandments his edicts what he has commanded <clears throat> so going after all the things of this world and going after wealth before going after god is going in the wrong places, looking for in the wrong direction, looking in the wrong places for the things of God. You can't find you're going a different direction. Because even in Corinthians, it says, 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, while we look at the things which are seen, we look at the natural things, we see natural things like I see this camera, I see this computer, I see these pages, I see this cup, I see this statue behind me. They're natural things. But the things which we are, but the things we are, not, look not to the things that are natural that you can see with your natural eye. Don't seek after those things, most and foremost, but seek after the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal this glass would bust and just go into the ground and i don't know if it how fast it deteriorates tissues will deteriorate faster in the glass but you know the curtains behind me different things will even the clothes we wear in our bodies when they're in the ground we will rot away they are temporal. That means they are temporary. They're only meant for a certain period of time. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Things that are not seen. What you can't see with a natural eye, that is. They're eternal. We shouldn't look at the natural things of this world. And for riches, things of this natural world are temporary and will pass away. 
We are to look at the spiritual and the kingdom things. Look at the spiritual and the kingdom things. <clears throat> they are eternal. And what even the word of God, I just forgot to bring my Bible in here. But the word of God and everything is eternal. That The pages of the book, here's a uh, devotional book, but the pages of the book may fade away, may deteriorate away or may burn up but his word what he had actually said that goes on forever and it's instruction the bible is instructions for us to help us to grow and to prepare ourselves for the spiritual things and in the bible it explains these spiritual things it helps us to understand these the things that we don't see we don't see with our natural eye, but in the spiritual eye, we could, we'll see, discern things. We'll see angels. We'll see uh, the manifestations of God and things that he, and becomes maybe sometimes even the natural will uh, come about. But we are to look at the spiritual things and the kingdom things. Go after those things. They are eternal and they will determine where we spend eternity. Are you going after God, seeking God and going after kingdom stuff and the, what the word has to say, what God has to say? Or are you seeking after this world and uh, having all that you need? God will provide those needs because they will determine our spent, where we spend eternity when we seek after the word of God. Seek after his thing. He gives us expl explanation of what we need to do to be re go to heaven or we may end up in hell. What will do we do with our soul at the end? Matthew sixteen twenty six said, For what profit is a man? What does it do you any good if you gain all the wealth, all the riches, and lose out on your spiritual life and lose out on heaven. What will you, a man give in exchange for his soul? Many people have in entertainment and different things have sold their soul, have sold their righteousness, have sold their spirit man in order to get that wealth and those riches. Sometimes even in the church has done that. <clears throat> but we need to do what Christ commanded us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's our main scripture for, for this night. I know I read a lot of scriptures and I talk about, but the word explains and gives us the information we need to realize. Luke 9.62, but and but Jesus said, no one, no, this ain't the main one, it's yet to come. But no one, after putting their hands to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. Jesus said, once we become his disciples, we are not to look back or go back to our past life and our sins and the habits and the worldly things of this world. If you're going after riches, if you're and the things of this world, you're looking the wrong direction. You're going the wrong way. Jesus says, "You are unfit for the kingdom work and unfit for His heavenly kingdom. Not only unfit to be what He called you to be. There's so many that have sold themselves out, and they're not fit for the kingdom. Not fit for the true gospel." And preaching it and doing it but they are not also not fit to enter into heaven his kingdomly heaven there's too much to do to waste time looking and going all the wrong directions and thinking and doing the wrong things we don't have time he's about to return 
So we need to work as hard as we can and uh, seek after God. Go looking for things of the Lord, information. I'm all the time asking the Lord to teach me, show me what I need to know, show me what I have to do to uh, prepare my heart even for this message to prepare things, to do things, to do the, to be, because I do not want to dishonor God. I love the Lord too much to misrepresent him. And many preachers are misrepresenting the God that I serve. And you're just wasting your time. Instead of looking at riches and looking backward or any other direction, or even looking all at all the troubles in life and what the, it, so many people may look at prophecy and see, well, this is going to happen and it's sad and all these troubles and tornadoes and earthquakes and uh, viruses and uh, different things, bad things happen. And they look at those and focus their, what I'm talking about, when you're looking to God or seeking God, you're focusing on Him. You're focusing on Him. You're looking, when you're looking, like uh, Jesus said to watch, you're focusing on what's ahead. You're focusing on the Heavenly Father and His things. But if you're thinking about and looking at all the riches and the worlds of things and our troubles, you focus on those things. And you let them, they will distract you from receiving. They will distract you, distract you from really getting what you need to prepare yourself for heaven. We are to look up and move forward in God, which is the right direction. We're living in the end time and prophecy is coming to pass all around us to this day. But are we looking up? Are we looking to what the Word has to say, what the Word is telling us to prepare our hearts for? <clears throat> it's coming to pass all around us. Here's this is this one is the main scripture. Jesus said this in Luke twenty one twenty eight, and he also said it uh, the same thing I think in Matthew. That, but when these things come, take place. What does it mean by these things? Read that chapter of Luke 21 and uh, Matthew 24 and other things. Jesus says, when these troubles, this end time events, and all these things take place. And we see, like even with signs of things happening with Israel. Signs with the Euphrates drying up. Signs of wars and rumors of wars, signs of earthquakes, signs of everything that the word of God had prophesied. He says, when you see these things really happen, like birth pangs, closer and closer together, he says, this is what, where, I, you know, the title of the message comes from. Straighten up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Straighten up and lift up your heads. Both mean the same thing. Rise up and look up. Look toward the heavens. Like David said in Psalms 121, he says, I look toward the hills. I look toward his presence. I look to the God that provides my needs and helps me in the time of need. Don't be so burdened down with this world, but straighten up so you can look up. Because think about it, when he's saying to straighten up, you might be bent down with troubles and trials and tribulations and and the riches. And you talk to rich, uh, wealthy people, they got a lot of responsibilities that can weigh them down. And all the things, if I, even if, uh, me, I'm not really a wealthy person, I'm not a wealthy person, but, uh, <clears throat> to think about all the things that I have to do as wife, mother, 
housewife, farmer, <laughs> church, helping the poor, but speaking the word of God and studying his word and acting as a prophet and getting revelations from God and, and praying. Oh, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of stuff and it could burn. It sometimes I have to think, remember to rest in him, seek him, look into his presence, look and spend time in his presence. Otherwise it would bend me over and burden me down. That's just an example. You don't want to be burdened down with the cares of this world, as Paul said. And don't let it distract you and pull you down. But rise up. Look up to heaven. Look up into God. Put, that means put your foot. Don't be so burdened down with his world. As you straighten up and look up. If you're not looking how up, how are you going to be seen by God? Or how are you going to see him when he comes? How are you going to see him when he comes or even hear him coming because you're so busy and distracted? Think about it. When you're distracted by something, you don't hear somebody trying to get your attention. Jesus said seven times in the first few chapters of Romans, he that he though that person that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So he was emphasizing how important it is to look up and listen up and and be uh, available to God. He also said in Mark thirteen thirty three, take heed, keep keep on the alert, for you do not want, you don't know when the point of time is. Keep on the alert. What is being on the alert? Looking, watching, praying, being attentive to what's spiritually happening, and going back to that other scripture. Uh, in 2 Corinthians, looking and expecting the things of the unseen, the things of God, more than the natural things that we do see. And also while you're watching and being on the alert and looking up, think about it. When you're looking up, you are watching and you are praying. You're watching and praying. You're being alert. You're looking up. Not only if you're on your knees or look, bowing your head in prayer, your focus of your heart, your focus of your mind, your focus of your words is looking, going up. Think about that. Seeking him, asking him, talking to the Lord. Because Matthew 26, 41 says, keep watching and praying. That you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So true. Keep watching. Keep praying. Keep looking up. Keep seeking and praying. And, and uh, <clears throat> that you may not enter. Jesus was telling the disciples that you don't enter into temptation. What is that saying? Uh it is, we need to realize that our flesh and our carnal man can be a hindrance. So we have to do away with it because entering the uh, temptation, let me see where I wrote down what I was talking about. But anyway, I'll go through this. Watching is being on the alert and having constant Virgil. For Christ's return, constantly thinking, constantly being watching, constantly being looking to in the direction of his return. We don't know when he will return, but be watching and looking and also praying. I tell that all the time. Be watching, looking, and praying. When you're praying, you're looking up. I explain that. It puts your focus on the 
Savior. Put your focuses on God. It helps us to get spiritually strong when you're on your knees before God and in his presence. He gives us strength. He gives us knowledge. He gives us the word. And we have that word too. The written word. So we can endure until the end and be overcomers. That's why we need to be on a prayer so we don't enter. We can endure the temptations, the temptations of sin, the temptations of our past, the temptations of the old life. And it will come. We are to be overcomers. And what another scripture says, endure till the end shall be saved because you overcame you endured the temptation you let it Satan will give you just about every kind of temptation you can to get you distracted from the looking in the right direction I'll say that again Satan and the enemy will get do anything he can to distract you and get your focus away from focusing on God because he wants you to focus on the things of this world. He wants you to focus on this world so you'll miss him when he shows up. He don't want you to go. He don't, he, he wants as many followers as he can. And God wants us to endure all the temptations or test of sin and the troubles that will come our way. And you have to do that by being on your knees. Be pr If you're not on, not, I can't get down on my knees like I used to, but I sit in a certain chair and I, 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 I'm praying while working. I'm praying while I'm walking. I'm praying when I'm tending my chickens. I pray for my chickens and, and different things. You, you be, what does the scripture say? Pray without ceasing. Continue praying. We will find ourselves so burdened down with this world, so we need to look up. Don't let it distract us and keep us from looking unto the Heavenly Father for our answers, looking unto the Word of God for our answers, looking for growth, looking for preparation for heaven. Because the, Satan will get, get you so distracted, he'll return, and you have not even been ready. Because there is certain requirements to be ready for heaven. The scripture gives us several things. First of all is ha having true repentance in your heart and living a salvation life. I, I won't go into that today, but there's things. But keeping your focus on God and he'll guide you and lead you in the right way. Think about the New Testament church, and I even try to remember that myself because of the ministry God has led me to, that for them to do the, for thousands to be saved, the first day after the Holy Spirit came upon them, 3,000 were saved. And by the time, a couple of hundred years later, nearly whole territories were uh, living for Jesus. And being saved. Many, many miracles. Many things were. But why? The Even Jesus said he had to pray. He had to spend time. He said. To, so he could even. Why do you think he was in the garden? To get strength. Spiritual strength to endure. The horrible death he knew was ahead of him. So be, having being in prayer, and even the Lord had showed me to do that kind of the ministry He we God has set up for the church. It takes being in prayer all the time, having a prayer warriors, having prayer meetings, having and be watching and seeking His face, not His hand. Seeking after wealth is seeking His hand. We are to seek his face. We're to seek the things of him. The what is it in Matthew six? Seek his righteousness. Then the things that we need will happen. <clears throat> we need to realize that our flesh or carnal man can be a hindrance. We've got to get 
the scripture even talks about doing away with our flesh, doing away with our carnal nature. What we used to do, what we used to enjoy, we can't do that no more. See, there's a lot of things I'm not allowed to do that you maybe not wrong to do. Some people can do things, but he is a, where he has appointed me right at this moment, there's things that I cannot go do because of where I stand, where my calling is. Now with somebody else, it may be fine, but there's so many things of this past world, listening to worldly music, listening to uh, doing all these worldly things and doing everything that pleases us. How about doing things that would please the Father? So do away with and doing away with our old man and our carnal flesh and nature. And there's an old song that we used to sing as children. Uh, I pulled off the old robe and put on the new. The old robe was all tattered and shit and torn, but the new robe was. I don't remember all the words to it, but we've got to get rid of this old man and put on Christ, put on Jesus, put on his mind, put on his way of thinking. Let our spirit be the lead and take control and do what and not do what we need to do. And he will show us what we need to do. If there's something we have to do. Let the spirit control us. Man has a tendency, and it was make up in ours to have a will, free will to do what we want. God gave it to us. But our free will should be willing, a will to want to serve and love God and do obey him in every way. What is the scripture saying several times throughout the word? To love God with all your heart, body, and soul. And everything within you to love him. When you're loving him and you're focusing on him, you tend to not do those bad habits. You tend to not do the things that would do harm to your flesh, to your body, to do harm to your, your spirit man, because you want to please him. And I've focused over the years to try to be as healthy as I can and eat the right foods. And I have to watch some of the foods that I, I know I do admit I make mistakes through the years. But <clears throat> to be healthy because i got work to do. I can't be de-daddling around. And I even found a new vitamin that is for another purpose. But it end up must have had some vitamins I needed. I've had more energy along with the Lord. I believe the Lord's helping me to, you know, I can, I still have struggles to do so much and then I have to sit down because my back injury is so bad. But having to have a desire to get up and do things around home, do things and get, you know, ideas and things that I need to do, focus on. But my main desire is still to study his word, to get in his presence, and to seek God every step I do, whatever I do, even what I fix, even what I wear, even what I do, you know, things that happen, and even when I drive, because these cars well, especially the one we got now is, I think it was a lemon or something that with all the issues in that, my son says, this is wrong. That's wrong. Both cars we have, uh, it needs this. He needs that. But yeah, when I drive it, there might be some issues I hear, you know, happening, but it does me fine. It do, you know, because I'm trusting the Lord. I'm focusing on the God, not on my problems, not on my situation. So we need to look up. We need to focus, get our mind and our hearts focused on God, to be focused on his will and what he wants for our lives. 
And being that we focus and let God have control, we can look in the right direction and keep on praying and seeking after the things of God. We watch and look up with our spirit, spirit and with our mind and our hearts stayed and focused on Jesus. There's another song I uh, used to sing. It woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Woke up this morning. It stayed on Jesus. An old song I used to sing in church. Not not gonna let anything hinder us. Not gonna let things pull us back. But we can focus and look at to God. We watch and look up to our with our spirit mind and. And in our heart, out of our hearts, because God looks at our hearts, the attitude, what we really desire. Many say with their lips that they love the Lord, but they are far from him. He even said that. He said that. Many say, I, I'll, I'll serve you. Many say, I'll do this and I'll do that. But they are far from him. So turn your way around and look to Jesus. The solution to your problems, the solution to your life, the solution to everything that we need. And because we're focusing and we're seeking after him and his ways, it will give us the opportunity. It will give us things that we need to do. And God will point out, you do this, you need to do that, or whatever. And the same with the reading his word, focusing and reading his word and studying his word, it'll come out and say, look, you do need to do that. You need to do this in order and do everything that needs to be. You, know, you are concerned about being ready to meet Jesus because he is about to return. He is about to return. So when these things happen, straighten up, look up. Because he is about to return. He, our redemption is coming soon. Look in the right direction. God bless you.